Hello Team BTI, this is Daniel from the Web Services team. In this second installment of video tutorials, I'm going to show you how to build a RESTful web service using the Spring Framework. This tutorial will be using the same dictionary web service that JP implemented using the Jersey Framework in the previous uh, tutorial. Jersey is an easier framework to build RESTful web services because it was designed specifically for that purpose. So why did we choose to show you how to build a RESTful web service in Spring? Because it is currently the dominant JEE framework and it allows you to expose legacy applications as web services without many code changes. Also, I'm sure many of you have used or are currently using Spring and, and are familiar with this framework. I already have uh, our project uh, defined for the uh, Spring uh, Dictionary service. Uh, the first file that we're going to look at is at the uh, servlet configuration file. Um, the first thing that we notice is the context component scan tag. Um, this enables auto detection of annotated components. Uh, the attribute that it has is the base package attribute. Uh, this attribute basically is the package in which um, Spring is going to scan for those components and in our case it is org.bti. Um, I'm going to show you two examples of um, component annotations in our dictionary controller uh, class. We have the um, controller annotation in the dictionary deo impl class. We have the repository annotation. So back in our servlet configuration, um, the last tag we're going to look at is this MVC view controller. Uh, uh, sorry, the MVC annotation driven. Uh, tag. Uh, what this does is it registers the default annotation handler mapping and the annotation method handler adapter which are required for Spring to dispatch requests to the uh, controller classes. Uh, it registers those beans to use JAXB to read and write XML and JAXN to read and write JSON if JAXB and JSON are in your class path. It also registers other converters to convert different number formats and date and time formats. Uh, so we're going to look at a couple of the annotations that Spring uses. Um, we're going to go back to our dictionary controller class and as you can see um, there are a few uh, imports up here uh, from the org Spring framework um, web.binding.annotation package. Uh, these are our different um, annotations. Uh, so the first one that we're going to look at is the controller annotation this lets Spring know that this class will serve as a controller in the MVC pattern. Um, Spring will basically search any class with the controller um, annotation for the request mapping um, annotation. Um, this annotation is used to map URLs onto an entire class um, or method. In this example you can see here we have uh, slash dictionary um, mapped at the class level but then you can see we also have request mappings um, for the different methods. Um, and we'll kind of go back to uh, talk about that uh, annotation later in more detail. Uh, the next annotation we have is the path variable annotation. This annotation is used to map variables in the URI um, to uh, method parameters. So in this case here we have the uh, word um, parameter which is mapped to um, this string uh, word um, parameter to this method. The next annotation that we have is the um, request body um, annotation uh, and as you can see we have an example here. This annotation is used to um, map the request body uh, onto one variable. Uh, in this example the contents of the request body will be stored in uh, this um, word parameter. The next annotation that we're going to look at, uh, the response body. This annotation is used to let Spring know that you uh, want whatever this method is returning uh, to be written to the response. And the uh, default status that will be sent along is the uh, OK status. Um, now if we wanted to change the status um, that our method is going to return, we would use the response status annotation. And uh, this annotation basically, like I said, just allows you to change um, from the default OK status to something else. 
Um, the next annotation that we have is the exception handler um, annotation. Um, this annotation basically tells Spring the type of exception uh, thrown in a controller, um, which which method should handle um, that exception. So in this case here, um, this handle not found uh, method is going to handle any uh, case where the uh, exception uh, not found, the not found exception is thrown. Um, and so we'll go and look at that later on. Another annotation um, that can be used, which um, we're not going to use in this example, um, but I'll let you know about anyways, that's the request parameter um, annotation. Uh, this is used to map uh, requests or query parameters um, to method parameters.